Hey everybody, welcome to my usual me. Welcome back to a Life is Feudal the MMO update for 0.2.0. All right, guys, I had to step out of the house, so I wasn't able to do this live earlier, but I have the audio for the Discord meeting that happened earlier, the AMA, that you saw on some channels and you saw on YouTube, but it's not available anymore for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to you here so you can, you can listen to it and you can scrub through it and you can find out your answers to the questions that they wanted to answer. They didn't answer all of my questions, but hopefully I'll get emailed in the next week. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy it. I'm not going to say anything at the end. We're just going to end it once it's over. So anyway, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, do that right now. As I always say, I am my usual me. You be your usual you, and I hope you enjoy this video. So here we go. Okay. Yeah. First of all, hello, everyone. And yeah, no, thank you, Steph, for stepping out and uh, moderating this AMA. And well, yeah, let's go. Awesome. Okay, to just dive straight in, will decoration kits be refunded? Uh, well, yes, they will be refunded, so, and I have stated it multiple times, and I stated once more, all decoration kits will be refunded. So whoever ever bought a decoration kit and used it on any of the worlds, it doesn't matter on what world you have used it, uh, you're going to get it uh, into your primary inventory, uh, so you will be able to use it again in any world that you are currently playing. Okay, great. What plans mm -hmm. do you have to bring in new players? No, oh, so sorry. I think I. Oh my God! Am I lag? Check, check, check. <laughs> you are a little. Old. Don't worry. Um, what plans do you have to bring in new players? Well, the major plan, uh, I think that free-to-play transition in some uh, period of time right after the uh, old 0 zero to zero uh, will help to bring us a lot of players and we also plan to run some marketing campaigns so in a classical way uh, how many free-to-play games are doing that uh, and well we hope that a lot of uh, our old community, our old veterans will come back to us. Well, we had a lot of players back in November 2017. So in few words, that's uh, a short plan, but the longer plan is, of course, is, is a whole long different. Yep. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans for developer run events on the new map, i.e. crown caravans and the like? Uh, well, there are no, no like certain certain uh, concrete plans, so, but there are a lot of ideas, and actually a lot of those ideas uh, are suggested by our players. Uh, and so uh, I think that once uh, all the rush <laughs> from you know uh, the gold rush uh, will be over in maybe in a couple weeks or a month, maybe a couple months. Uh, then we plan to introduce some events on a new map and uh, on an app one too. Okay, cool. What are your plans for lag optimization in the 0 0.2.0? Uh, so, first of all, uh, most of the optimization, well, the, the major optimization that we have achieved is the switching on uh, Nick's server, uh, and surprisingly, it brought a lot of a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of optimization and a way 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 better performance uh, for our servers. And before that, we had a bottleneck in CPU in uh, process calculations. Now our bottleneck was the network, but we believe that we have also solved it. And there is an, another problem on the client side that is also being solved right now, and we plan on zero to zero. Everything combined all together should provide a way, way, way better experience. But still, still, legs can happen, but I do hope that there will be. First, the manifold. Then we boost your javelin. You silence the heart of rage, and boom. Everyone lives happily ever after. Will 
probably less often and less uh, game breaking as was the network, but we believe that we have also solved it. And there is an, another problem on the client side that is also being solved right now, and we plan on zero to zero. Everything combined all together should provide a way, way, way better experience. But still, still, lags can happen, but I do hope that there will be less often and less uh, game breaking as they were all before until. Okay, brilliant. Uh, oh, well, step, uh, step, sorry, just one uh, remark. Um, uh, for those, I, I just received a private message. For those uh, who have hard time hearing me with all those notification sounds, so people joining in and leaving out uh, in a Discord setting, you can turn off uh, those sound notifications so you can hear everything. Okay, let's proceed. Okay. How will players get to the new? Uh, how players will get uh, to the new map? Yeah. yeah, Discord is lagging, at least for me. <laughs> uh, well, uh, first of all, the classical way, you know, they just create a new character on a new island, they play there, they buy a um, ticket, a uh, simple ticket, so, or a uh, ticket to Abella, or if they already have a ticket to Abella, they can use it and get on a new map. And in case of the current characters, uh, there will be uh, a transfer possible uh, from uh, Apple and on this new map, and the details of this transfer will be disclosed later. Well, you know, guys, soon. <laughs> okay, will it be possible to trade and transfer back and forth from Apple and to the new uh, From Apple and on the new map, yes, it will be possible. From from the new map on the airplane, no, it will not be. And yes, okay. uh, of course, okay. I see the chat. Uh, I see uh, the chat that yes, soon is the answer. But trust me, guys, soon you will know the full info uh, as soon as uh, along with the zero to zero release date, but not on in the current. <laughs> Right, we're going to move on to fees, taxes, and new work now. Oh, no. so, sorry, Stefan, hero. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I read the chat also, just guys, nobody will be forcibly moved on a new map. No, it will not be uh, the same way how we moved everyone on Appland. Everyone will stay on Appland. It will be your decision if you want to move your character from Appland on a new map, or if you want to create a new character and play with it. It will be your Okay, let's proceed, Steph, yeah. Yeah, moving on to the next topic. How will the mm -hmm. new concept of fiefs and territories work? Uh, so <laughs> that's, that's a broad question. Uh, but our idea is that um, now... <laughs> <coughs> Life will be more feudal uh, by the meaning that there will be uh, fiefs uh, that are pre-designed, pre-created by us, and everything will be more discreet. Uh, that means that uh, there will be no dynamical radius of your claim. There will be a certain fief that you own or that you do not own. And we're also aiming uh, with this, with this uh, mechanics, we also plan that... Um, it will be significantly harder for someone to lose his main uh, guild claim. Uh, and it's done intentionally uh, to prevent players from losing something they have spent so many months uh, working on. But still, it will be possible. And, uh, well, it might not be the main goal, but still it's also a quite important goal for everyone. And we also think it's more fun when you have the political map with all those lands, so with all those provinces, I'd say in that, in that way we'll be way, way, way closer to global political maps of other well-known uh, PvP. How can players capture first fiefs at the start of 0 0.2? Well, it's simple. You just go outside and uh, 
place a guild monument so, or if you already have a guild monument that means you already have claimed a first or uh, fifth after that you just uh, build outposts uh, and that's the way how you can claim additional fifths and as mm -hmm. uh, probably everyone has seen um, our zero to zero landing page so there are numbers uh, uh, limitations uh, of amount of fees that you can have uh, depending on the level of your guild monument. Uh, this, uh, as once as you have level 4 guild monument, so you can claim unlimited amount of fees. Okay. How will protectorate screen zones um, work and how will they be integrated to, into the new map? So, firstly, they are integrated right away. It's a part of the new map that is designated as a green zone. So, it's actually four such starting villages with uh, uh, green zones around them. You know? So, each uh, starting village green zone is about six, um, about six um, uh, server nodes wide. Uh, also, uh, we have 24 server nodes, uh, server, server nodes uh, that are green. Uh, such server nodes so will have no PvP rules. That means nobody will be able to kill you there. Pretty much the same way as you live on um, on a central city. Well, when you visiting a central city, uh, there will be no guilds uh, in any way on this uh, green uh, zones. Uh, that means you will be, uh, not be able to put an outpost or a guild monument on it. Uh, you will be uh, only able to place a private claim. And the private claims, um, like everyone will be able to place a private claim. The only but, the only difference is that uh, provinces in those green zones called protectorates, they still can be owned by some guilds uh, and guilds can fight for them. Uh, and owning a protectorate, owning a province means that you will get uh, the tax taxes from all the um, private claims uh, on this uh, in this province in this pro protectorate. Uh, but still, you will not be able to forcibly remove somebody or change the tax rate or do anything nasty. It just means that those who live there just w give a share of their income to you, but nothing else. Mm -hmm. I okay. think that's it in, in a few words. Yeah. How will the outposts work in 0 0.2? So uh, they will work the same way how they work now, except except uh, they will be used now to claim a fifth. Uh, and only one outpost uh, can be created on a single fifth. Uh, they can be... Um, uh, upgraded now, there can be up to three levels of upgrade or three levels of an outpost. Uh, each uh, outpost upgrade uh, increases the production speed and it also adds some kind of vitality to the outpost, meaning that it will take longer uh, to uh, reclaim it, uh, to cast, um, to successfully finish the claiming ritual. And uh, actually, that means that also amount of lives uh, that you have to. Uh, if you have a level 3 outpost, uh, enemies have to claim it three times uh, before it will actually become theirs. Um, with every successful claim, they're just downgrading uh, your outpost. Um, and yeah, you have to support each outpost now with a gold in a similar way as you support uh, your guild. Yeah, okay. I think that's it in a few words. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. You just. How will that work on 0.2.0? Well, I think it's the most risky part of our changes um, because it's something uh, <laughs> I personally have never seen something similar in different games. Uh, but the point is that Judgment Hour is now is not a server-wide event. Uh, it's something that each guild decides for itself. Uh, uh, so you pick uh, one, uh, you pick three prime hours, uh, time zones. Uh, for instance, if you have a guild, you might pick a, a European time zone uh, prime time. Uh, you can pick Moscow prime time, and you can pick uh, Brazilian prime time. Uh, depending on the rank of your guild, uh, you will be vulnerable uh, during those prime times, uh, and the higher your rank. 
uh, the longer judgment hours will be for you and the more frequent they are, the more prime time uh, the zones will be active for you. So if you are a small guild of, let's say, 10, 15 people that are just living in some distant part of the land, you will have, you will probably have a judgment hour only for one or two hours uh, during weekends, during your main prime time, and that's it. Um, and we designed the ranked system in that way that at least 50% of all the guilds uh, in zero to zero patch uh, will be uh, ranked 10, 9, 8. Uh, so that means there will be low rank. That's how we um, create the ranks. That means that at least 50% of our guilds uh, will not have to fight uh, for their properties um, longer than, uh, than it's really needed. Uh, more often, I'd say, more often. So it uh, will be only weekend prime times during the uh, prime time zone and nothing else. Uh, but as long as uh, power playing guilds want to be on um, to be ranked first, that means that they will have to bother bother with uh, rising uh, their ranks in a different prime time zones. So they have to have a guild that uh, have a good presence during European prime time and maybe uh, Moscow prime time and Brazilian prime time. Or it depends. Maybe it will be uh, an A guild, and they will want to, to have a maximum presence on East Coast, West Coast, US so prime time. Mm -hmm. So, in few words, that's how it uh, it is going to work, uh, and everyone must understand uh, uh, that um, effectively, effectively, uh, sometimes you might have neighbors that are living uh, like a different universe. Because uh, their prime time hours, judgment prime time hours, are very different from your prime time hours, and everyone must understand that. Uh, in that case, it is fine, because, uh, for instance, nobody will be able to bash each other buildings at 4 a.m. Uh, and uh, unless somebody really wants uh, good allies uh, in a prime time of the targeted guild and I'll call ask them to fight with that guild. But mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say is that uh, effectively you might see some neighbors that uh, will be in a different time zone and it's fine that you will not be really effectively fight with them and they will not be really effectively able to fight. Okay. I hope my, Got it. my, it's clear, yeah. New in instant battle, how will they work on 0.2.0? So basically they will work uh, the same way they work now uh, from the conception of how everyone is loading up, uh, what are the objectives and so on and so forth. Um, but the only difference that uh, winning or losing um, instant battle uh, is, n is not that harsh now. Uh, because it means that you have lost um, a province um, and lost some kind of some amount of taxation for a certain period of time. That doesn't mean that your monument got degraded. That doesn't mean that uh, you will be sieged uh, tomorrow or anything like that. It only means that uh, you are you have you now have a less presence on the global politics maps. No global politics map, and you are uh, having less uh, of additional income because you are not uh, getting the taxes from this province. And when we are winning uh, instant um, uh, instant battle, uh, that means you have actually got another province that you are more visible on a politics map, so on politics map, and probably pay for, for your monument support with just the tax money that uh, you are getting from other guilds and players. So it's also a good uh, point to fight. Mm -hmm. That moves us on to the next question. How will mm -hmm. the taxation mm -hmm. system work in 0.2.0? Uh, well, yeah, uh, partly I have answered on this question. <laughs> uh, so yeah, <laughs> uh, so basically, um, each uh, province, so um, uh, there will be multiple guilds. So in case of protect rights, there will be multiple uh, private claims. Uh, so each uh, guild will have to pay for their monument support and for their outpost support, as I mentioned earlier. And 20% of the support money uh, 
they uh, will go as a taxation to the guild that is currently owning this province. Uh, it's not that much, but it's it's also it's quite significant amount of money, and so um, that means that uh, that effectively that battle effective guild can actually control a lot of provinces and get a good stream of revenue towards them without having a strong crafter or backup. Uh, and we also expect that big uh, and ambitious guilds uh, will do a lot to fight for those provinces and control as more territory as possible. But our point is that uh, everybody uh, will fight for pride, you know, for uh, for their satisfaction. But no one will be really upset because he uh, has lost uh, his major castle or something like that. Of course, it still will be possible, but we want to have a, for IBs to be uh, less punishing uh, to those who have lost them. But still, it will be a significant loss, especially if you hold it this province for a good amount of time, and now you have lost it. And mm -hmm. well, yeah, and all the taxes from all the uh, outposts and uh, monuments will be gathered to. All uh, each maintenance, uh, each uh, in-game day, um, and will be uh, will be dropped uh, to the guild monument. And that's pretty much it. Uh huh. Okay, moving on to one of the higher anticipated mm -hmm. topics: the new map. <laughs> Why mm -hmm. a map for all mm -hmm. regions? Why is it more comfortable and more convenient for? <clears throat> well, of course we are. We're really wanting to for everyone to play on the same world, on the same map, um, and that's what trying hard to create a world that will be suitable for all types of players. And I believe we are really close now, uh, because the, pro the main problem that we had and still have is that we have players from different uh, time zones, uh, and so... We just need to be sure that they all can have their fun and they don't have to play when it's not comfortable or comfortable for them. That's why we implemented the uh, the judgment hour system as I uh, sounded, and that's why we're going to have protect rates and um, and just simple provinces, so-called uh, green and red nodes, will be on the same map. Um, but but. Um, Talking about the Appland, we believe that Appland is a role-playing server, and uh, a lot of role players uh, invested a lot in, into this server, and we want to keep it 100% uh, role-playing uh, as it possible. Uh, while at the same time, green nodes uh, protect rates on a new map, uh, they will not allow to place any guild monuments uh, on a green land. Uh, that's why. We believe that role-playing possibility on this new world will be rather limited because, well, simply you will not be able to build a huge castle because uh, your limitation will be the, your private claim, and that's it. Or if you will build a beautiful castle outside of Greenland or Protectorate, um, you will you will risk uh, to lose it, and that's also something that I think everybody wants to avoid. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why that's why we actually want uh, as many players as possible on the same map in the same world. But that's why we want uh, to have, have role, play, role players to have a separate world for them uh, to play uh, and don't have uh, limitations at time. Mm -hmm. and, okay. And yes, uh, just, just just a quick remark: since there will be no active connection, uh, trading or import export between Appland and the new world so that means that having a backup guild somewhere on apple land so to trade resources blah 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 it will not work uh, because you will not be able to uh, transfer resources from apple land on a new map uh, that's why uh, you will not be able uh, to have a safe heaven or to support your battle activities on a main map yeah mm. oh well you're well, you're welcome guys <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, people people seem happy. Okay, how will players spawn at the start of 0 0.2? Uh, well, uh, they, will they will spawn uh, 
in a four different location that will be picked randomly. Uh, those random locations are actually starting villages, or well, some in some radio radius around those starting villages. So there will be no spawn somewhere on the shore or somewhere else. Um, the spawn points will be pretty much predefined now. Uh, and yeah, from there you will be able to run around and yeah, go to explore. Uh, there were some questions to ask about if somebody will be able to pick a certain, a certain starting zone. Uh, I'd say it, it is not that easy to implement and also we want to make sure that we will uh, be able to balance the load between all those four starting zones. Uh, that's why we are not giving an option to pick a starting location. But anyway, it's, we believe it's not that hard so for you to run for six hours to your guild monument. I mean, it, it's just six hours of running with all the wolves and everything. Come on, guys. <laughs> no, on a, on a serious side, um, we believe that um, as soon as your as soon as the core of your guild build a monument, so, uh, a guest code so should be working. So all the new transferees, so those who just transferred or from New World or from Appland, they should be able to use a guest code and those they will spawn right on the monument. That means that uh, only um, few starting players will have to run uh, to a desired location. The rest will be fine. Yeah, and spawns yeah, are, are inside green zones. So sorry to interrupt. Yeah, spawns so will be no, in green zones. So, so yeah, so, so there will be no PvP, and no <laughs> no primitive uh, primitive hammer or primitive sickle fight fest or anything. <laughs> you will have uh, to run around uh, for quite some time before you leave the green zone. And in that case, uh, we believe it will be not that crowded. And yeah. Outside of the green zone, you are more than welcome to rip each other heads right away with a stone primitive hammer. Nice. What will the weather system be like in 0 0.2? Uh, so, basically, basically, a weather system uh, is uh, less less uh, of impact uh, on the farming, on uh, animal breeding, on the uh, trees growing now. It affects us, but uh, in a way, very, very minor state. The overall weather, uh, overall, overall climate on a new map um, is less, uh, is, uh, is less of variable. I uh, would say it's mild and continental climate uh, on all, on almost all of the nodes. So there will be no like, the desert or um, harsh uh, tundra climates anymore. Uh, but uh, there is one important change uh, that we didn't really highlight uh, in our zero to zero, uh, that all the, um, that we have implemented a calendar uh, that you will be able to take a look uh, in game. And this calendar will tell you when it's good time to uh, seed or when it's good time to sow something um, to plant or to plant to, to breed or anything and what is good time to uh, harvest um, the crops or slaughter the animals or something like that so my point is that you are no longer depend on the weather that much uh, and you are more depending uh, depend on the uh, date and time uh, that is currently in game now but you will be able to see this calendar and plan your crafting uh, activities uh, accordingly so uh, weather is more like visuals now and the calendar is more is more important for your crafting um, peaceful okay we're going to move on to the new progression system and the new skill tree. So first question, how will the new progression system work in general? Uh, just, 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 just a short remark, I saw it in AMA, uh, we will keep the alignment. I think it's safe to say that yes, alignment will be kept for all the characters, even after you transfer on a new land. So. 
<laughs> maybe it's a good time to raise your alignment and not to let it drop. Uh, so all characters that will be transferred uh, will keep their current element. Now back to new progression system. Uh, so basically, basically, imagine uh, how it works in well-known space MMO, <laughs> uh, but with our own twist. Uh, so basically, you have a skill. You can set it up to be uh, leveling up. It will race constantly or with the same speed, um, and uh, as soon as uh, the skill reaches uh, a level 30, level 60, level 90, or level 100, uh, it will stop its leveling. Uh, so you will have to sp uh, pick the same skill and uh, say, uh, "Okay, I have reached a level 30 in uh, in armor smithing. Now I want to level up to level 60 armor smithing." Uh, but in order for that constant race to happen, you must have your experience pool. Uh, pool. Uh, you must have an experience your experience pool. And in order for that, you have to do basically the same actions as you do now in your crafting, gathering, or mining, and all that stuff. Uh, so our skill caps are still uh, separate, the combat and uh, crafting uh, skill caps, and uh, experience pools uh, pool are also different now. Uh, but the good uh, news are that you don't, you are not required to do the certain ability of a certain skill to raise a certain skill. That means that you can now harvest your crops, and experience that you get from harvesting the crops, you can use it on your armor smithing. Or you can craft different armor and use experience for that or on alchemy. Um, and so the same thing so goes with combat skills. So you can hit a, um, a training dummy or hit someone in an instant battles and then so use those skills for warhorse handling or for battles. Um, and well, basically that's it. So you must uh, make sure that you have your experience pool packed uh, up with experience, and make sure that you set the certain skills to be leveled up, uh, that you don't forget it. And keep in mind that they're all constantly leveling, even when you're asleep or at work or away. Just want to let everyone know that we will have time so, so, to answer your questions as well at the end, just in case you're worried about anything getting missed. Yeah, uh, but sometimes I also start to interrupt that, but sometimes I do, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I pick some questions, yeah, and I see that there are some questions about the food. Yes, food, um, we also rework the food system. Um, in our life is fiddle way that uh, you will have to eat more variety of different food and food and all the multipliers are now uh, affecting the speed uh, of how you will on the speed how fast you will get the experience so uh, your skill leveling cannot be changed uh, it basically depends on the complexity of the skill and the current level of the skill and you are not able to speed it up or slow it down, it just goes uh, with a constant speed. Uh, but the amount of experience you get uh, for, for each successful crafting or combat action uh, will be actually affected by food and so uh, boosters and all that stuff. Well, basically the same uh, way how you can affect it now. Okay, let's continue. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, where are we? Will you still lose skill points when you die? Um, short answer yes, uh, but it will be um, uh, less harsh now uh, because at first uh, you're going to lose experience and then if uh, you had no enough of experience to cover the loss of your death, uh, then your skill points uh, will be depleted. Uh, that means that uh, once you, once you are, uh, when you have a full uh, experience uh, pool, and when you have a good alignment, uh, if you die, most probably uh, the experience in your experience pool will be enough. So you will lose quite a significant amount of experience, but your skills will be intact. That means that you can go on and level up for, and get, get more experience and go die again, uh, and it's fine. But if your alignment is low, or if for some reason your experience pool is 
not full or empty. Uh, that means that if you die, you will lose uh, actual skills. Uh, that's why we recommend everyone to keep your experience pool full or as full as possible, um, because that means that you will not your skill level will not help, and that means that if you die, uh, lose less skill points or lose no skill points at all. And yes, yeah, skill cap is still the same. Okay. How do we change attributes in the new progression system? Um, as far as I remember, attributes are going the same way as they uh, are going now. That means that they rise up uh, with the abilities that you use. So uh, attributes are rising, uh, will be rising up the same way as they are rising now while skills will be progressing uh, in an offline manner. Okay. Are there any changes to the minor and combat skills? Um, as far as I remember, there are no that many changes or no changes at all. Um, maybe Binart will be able to answer this question. Oh, it's okay. only about skill, 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 uh, skill tree changes, not the uh, actual combat changes, but skill tree changes. No, no change. Okay, you, you are lagging okay. a little bit, Binar. Yeah. Or maybe it's me lagging. Me too. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, next question. How intelligence and mentoring work in New Um. So intelligence are working the same way. It rises your skill cap. Uh, and mentoring, um, so far, uh, uh, so far, we uh, designed. Uh, um, I'll, I'll be straightforward with you guys. We designed a uh, quick and easy placeholder, uh, placeholder mentoring system. Uh, it works uh, pretty much the same way as the old one is working. Uh, that means that so you have a teacher, you have a student. Uh, one student wants to learn a certain skill. Uh, he comes to the school. Uh, he picks the skills. He's well, he see what uh, what the teacher uh, has, and he uh, he uses an ability. And after a, a successful use of ability, uh, the student receives an experience. An amount of his experience he receives uh, depends on uh, the skill uh, difference between his skill and uh, teacher's skill. So let's say if I have 19 uh, armor smithing and there is a uh, player who got zero in armor smithing, he will get a lot of experience. Uh, and of course, the timeout is still the same, so you will not be able to do that so constantly. Uh, but we believe that it will be a good addition uh, uh, and a good way to keep your experience bar full. Uh, and as I said, it's quite important both for your skills progression and for skill loss to avoid the skill loss. Yeah, that's, that's how it's going to work now, but we plan to implement the professions uh, in some way or another. And uh, once we're going to implement them, it, it will be way beyond the zero to zero. But once we're going to implement them, we're going to work mentoring system and make it more engaging and more fun and more complex. But for now, mentoring is like another way for you to get an experience in a uh, without grinding that too much. Mm -hmm. well, but well, at first you have to build that school anyway and, and have a good, good teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next question. How will you level the combat system with a new progression system? How, how will that work? Um, again, it will work uh, the same way as it works now, except that you will not get the actual skills, or you will get the combat experience that you will be able to use to level up any combat skill you like. So, dealing a damage or receiving a damage when you are armored, or, or driving a warhorse, or triggering a battle survival, bandage well pretty much everything that uh, gives you a skill progression now will give you an experience that you will be able to use uh, for your combat skills okay what about upcoming combat patch uh what about co upcoming combat patches binard it's it's your time to through <laughs> 
Bina? Dis dispensed. Uh, repeat, please. Uh, I didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Sober up already. <laughs> We're just wondering about upcoming combat patch. What should I tell you? About the new meta or what do you mean? It'd be general. I, um, just it's just what whatever you play, players would like to know if there's any combat patches. Up. Yeah, uh, with zero to zero there will be a combat patch update, uh, which will change <laughs> as usual everything. Uh, uh, <laughs> more slow paced combat uh, updates for. Any weapon updates for horses, player bouncing. There was uh, a lot of. I'm not sure. I read all this now. <laughs> Thank you. <very> much. <laughs> well, okay. In few words, um, I speak with Binard uh, a lot and. Uh, yeah, with zero to zero, there we expect a lot of fixes uh, for combat patches um, for combat. Uh, we know about current uh, current not not exploits, uh, something that doesn't look normal to us and to you and to everyone, and we're going to fix it. Uh, and well, yeah, uh, you will see it on zero to zero by yourself rather soon. Yeah, you excellent. <laughs> Let's that continue. Word. Yeah, moving on to reworked tray assist. First question, how will the crown delivery feature work? Um, so, yes, uh, we had a lot of discussion about it, but now we believe that uh, we have to pick uh, lesser evil. And two evils that we have now is um, first evil uh, is that market uh, global trading and market system doesn't work because you have to fetch a lot of goods and travel for hours between trade posts and those trade posts can be blocked or camped or just there are many reasons why those trade posts can be inaccessible. And another evil that we have um, is that while well, teleportation of goods that actually removes such a necessity to travel or to the trade posts or to pick up your goods. So we decided that we better have a teleportation uh, because uh, that means that uh, there are, uh, it, mean it gives more advantage to the trading system. That means that will actually work, that there will be more chances that it will work and that teleportation will be rather expensive, so we do not expect that everyone will be uh, using it right away. Uh, and so that's why we decided to implement it. So if you have something uh, something uh, not that significant and not that uh, important and not that expensive for you, but you don't want to bother running there, you, uh, you can get a um, delivery ordered to you and pay a certain amount of uh, in-game gold. Uh, but if it's something heavy and something uh, important or valuable, uh, you probably will prefer to travel there by yourself to save all that gold. But you have a lot of excessive gold. Well, yes, you can order deliveries uh, to your trade post. Um, it's fine to you. That means that we have another sink of uh, in-game gold, in-game in uh, money, and that means they are more valuable to our players. Okay. Will it be possible to purchase regional items? Yes, it should be possible. We like I don't have 100% uh, guarantee that it will be uh, implement will be implemented as soon as possible. And yes, I believe we should be able uh, to trade and transfer uh, regional items in the same world when we are talking about the same world. Next question: Any plans to make in-game currency more valuable? Uh, well, first of all, as I said, um, 
you will be able to use in-game currency for um, transferring items between trade posts for uh, delivery items delivery. Uh, second of all, uh, you will need a lot of uh, in-game gold for support of all the outposts and monuments. And third option, uh, we also consider some ways how a character, a player, can spend gold on his own uh, character. And we're considering maybe some ways how players can buy experience uh, with the gold. But it's not implemented yet and will not be in 0-0, zero zero, or most probably, but might be uh, implemented later on. Uh, so yes, we obviously see that uh, in-game gold uh, needs more value and I think we are already adding a good amount of value uh, with those changes and we plan to do it even longer. We, okay. we plan to do it so in the future. Got it. Now we're moving on to rare resources. And how rare are the rare uh, how rare are the rare resources? They are rare. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, medium rare, yeah. That's, that's the best one, yeah. Medium I rare. agree. <laughs> I mean, well done is not a good option, yeah. Uh, so, on a serious note, uh, on a serious uh, note, uh, they will not be that rare. Uh, so idea is um, that some resources, uh, some rare resources will be of two types and that means that half of regions will contain one type of resource another part of regions will contain the second type of resources. So that means if you don't have uh, a resource uh, that you need in your region, most probably you have it in a neighboring region. Uh, so you will not have to travel on of the map to get it. Uh, but you will have to travel or trade it um, you, or you will have problems to get it right to where you settled up. Some resources will be of four types uh, and that means uh, that they will be more rare. Um, that means that well, let's say one fourth of region will contain one resource, one fourth of region another resource and so on and so on. In most of the cases uh, they are, you know, those regions are distributed in a checkboard manner. Um, that means the, it's not like um, certain rare resources in the northern part of the map and nothing on the south and vice versa. No, in most cases it's a checkboard pattern. But still, when you have four types of different rare resources, that means that even neighboring um, uh, regions might not have a resource that you need. And that means you will have to travel a bit further, maybe to, some, to the neighbor of that neighboring uh, region. Uh, mm -hmm. But the main idea, main idea of rare sources uh, is that they are more available, way easier to get uh, than uh, original resources. Yet they are not that easy to get as a normal resources because you cannot get them right under your feet or cut down the tree right, uh, tree right away. So it's something in between. Uh, we had uh, original resources, we had the normal resources, and now we have something in between. So whenever you uh, uh, Whenever you ask a question about rare resources, just find the middle ground between normal and rare and original resources, and that's where rare resources will probably be. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much rare resources will be required, and how will they be integrated into the craft? Well, how much rare resources will be needed depends uh, completely on what you are trying to achieve and what you are doing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but the main idea that some middle tier crafting uh, will require rare resources in almost all cases. So if you have, uh, let's say, uh, for um, novice armors, you will not need the rare resources. Uh, but for regular and veteran ones, you will need that. Uh, and well, sorry for yeah for regular you will need them and for veteran for tier tier three uh, armor you will need so uh, unique resource original resource sorry mm -hmm. um, so basically uh, anything that's in between the basic uh, starting and some a bit more advanced items you will not need rare resources but anything between those items and uh, items that require regional resources, uh, everything in between will require rare resources. Okay. 
Moving on to the next topic, which is natives. Why should players hunt natives? What's in it for them? No, you should not hunt natives. Leave natives alone. <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a serious note, on a serious note, um, it's up to you. Well, first of all, we believe uh, uh, it, it, it is fun. We had some play tests, and one of the recent play tests provided a lot of fun for us because some uh, types of natives can make sudden and unexpected moves uh, that can result in a wipe of half of your party. <laughs> and well, so somebody might, um, might see a fun in that, somebody might see a huge challenge in that, but anyway, I think uh, there will be a lot of emotions involved uh, with the native resources. Uh, secondly, secondly uh, there will be some quite valuable resources and quite valuable items so as a loot of those native uh, in those native uh, uh, villagers and third part well it's pvp or pve i think uh, you might not be looking for natives themselves but you might be looking for those who are right uh, raiding the natives right now in order to raid them in order to get the loot that they are prepared in order to succeed uh, fighting those natives in, in our vision, that's a three main goals around the natives, but there are maybe a lot of secondary and minor goals so that you will work out for yourself or that are not. Yeah. Will natives will on the map and attack players? Uh, not in zero to zero. We want to see how they work um, in general in a closed um, in a closed combat uh, in their villages. Uh, but once we see that everything is fine and we expect that everything is fine, uh, we might uh, we might run some events uh, that will uh, make some kind of natives incursion, uh, and that means that natives will start ambushing you our players uh, and we'll see how it's going to work out well we definitely do not uh, promise um, like a full raiding party that will damage your walls and gather your crops and burn everyone and so on it's too complex to implement but some kind of ambushes so i think it still will be possible some kind of random encounters but it will not be straight uh, at the release of zero to zero. But in some time after it, yes, most certainly. Okay, cool. Are thieves with the natives claimable? No. Why do you want to c claim a native? <laughs> <laughs> well, s well <laughs> frankly saying, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, frankly saying that. Um, uh, there will be no thieves uh, operational under uh, native camps, and uh, that means that, so, well, probably many of you, you have seen uh, a white special land that's covering all the native villages, uh, so it's going to be there, and it's going to have special attributes, and one of those special attributes that you will not be able to build anything or construct anything on it, and thus you will not be able to claim it uh, with, uh, with an outpost or a guild monument. But, but uh, if the question means if you are, will be able like, to protect a certain uh, native sweet village in order to be able to farm it w with yourself alone only, I think in theory it, it is doable. If you have a strong presence in this area, if you have some kind of walls perimeter and some kind of guards to protect um, this, uh, this native village from anyone except your guild members, I think it's possible. And we will see how it's going to work out. So um, we we, do, we foresee that maybe maybe some major alliances or guilds will be controlling one or two native spawns just for themselves, and everyone else will be afraid to go in because they will be jumped instantly. Now, yeah, I think major guilds and major alliances so have the right to do so if if they really have power to do so. Okay. Moving on to counselors, how can uh, a player become a counselor? Um, so um, there will be a special um, uh, web page, uh, in-game uh, web page that will be uh, able to open. 
uh, the players will be able to open. Uh, you basically have uh, to have a character uh, created that is on the mainland um, with some level of um, well, with some level of progression. So you are not a newbie yourself, yes. Uh, and you will be asked to fill a form, a rather small form, uh, stating well, what is your languages, uh, what is uh, what are your language preferences, so, uh, so your Discord ID and some other uh, stuff. And after it, you will be become a counselor. And uh, when a, a new player uh, arriving to, on the newbie island. Um, during the tutorial, they will be offered to for help um, of a, or for a live help of a counselor. And if he see that uh, you are suitable for them, that you are that you are speaking the same language, that you are active, uh, that you have a good rate, that you have a Discord ID, and so on and so on, they might pick you as their counselor. And after that, uh, you will have uh, you will have to help them uh, to progress through the game and uh, get on the mainland. As, and as soon as they get on the mainland, they will be asked to rate your help. And depending on how they rated your help, you will get um, God's favor, the premium currency, as a reward uh, for helping us with educating this player. So the short answer on this question, pretty much everyone can be in counselor, but make Make sure that you will uh, be really friendly and helpful to pro to newbies, uh, so they will rate you highly, and that means that you will be a high-ranking counselor. That means that you will get even more God's favor as a reward if you have a lot of uh, newbies um, uh, um, educated by yourself, uh, and that means that there will be a likely higher chance that you will be picked as a counselor by some newbie because uh, he will see that um, that you are high ranked. Basically how ranks are working in all different <laughs> games and, yeah, and applications. Nice. I guess before we wrap up, we're going to take some time to read uh, the, some of the questions that have been posted. And Bobek, you can answer. I think we'll We'll be doing this for about 15 minutes. We'll see how we go. But before we do start that, I just want to thank everyone for listening to our 0.2.0 update. Okay, we'll be. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, first of all, thank you for listening. Uh, now I will. it's a good time to post your question. Uh, well, guys... Please save some time uh, and do not post a question that you will get an answer soon on me. Uh, so, well, let's start. I will scroll up. So, about the fog, uh, we're definitely asking for some screenshots about what exactly makes you so frustrated about the fog because neither our QA nor other players were able to, to reproduce what kind of problem do you have. As far as, uh, as, as far as we understand, there are some players that increase brightness to the maximum uh, in order to be able to see more clearer during the night. But when the morning or day comes, uh, the fog becomes too oversaturated for them. That's why they don't see anything. Um, in that case, we only suggest just to reduce your brightness to the normal level. Uh, but we also sus suspect that there might be some kind of graphical or visual bug on some kind of video uh, cards that make uh, fog unplayable to you. In that case, we ask for screenshots and more details uh, about what kind of video cards and software you have. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, that's why we ask to provide that info because we do believe that fog is playable, rather playable if everything is is working fine and as intended. And if somebody have a, a fog that is unplayable for them, please report it and we will make the fixes. Uh, okay, so will you be able to complete damage during the judgment hour? As in nothing will be safe. Well, don't think I understand this question completely, but yeah, you, during the judgment hour, uh, you will be able to raid 
uh, fifths uh, of the guilds that um, uh, that have genuine our active for, for now. But in order to damage, really damage, destroy something, you will have to have an outpost of level three near their fifths, and you have to light it up. Um, as we say. Uh, and only our, after you have lighted up your level to free outpost, only then uh, you will be able to, re uh, to raid and destroy uh, objects and outposts and uh, well and buildings uh, on a neighboring uh, uh, um, uh, any siege weapons. No, no siege weapons yet. Uh, but. <laughs> Well, of course, we expect them to be soon. Uh, as saw a lot of talks about siege ladders, unfortunately, guys, it is not that easy as it sounds, and the same story with the boats, uh, because uh, it affects the um, physical model of the player, uh, and his state, and so on and so forth, so in order to make it properly, we have to spend some time doing it. I mean, <laughs> everybody said, well, trading cards are easy, well... <laughs> We spend a lot of efforts to make them properly working, and they're not like completely properly working as they now. And the same story will be probably with uh, with, with boss at least. Mm. Uh, uh, will you be able to place more than one outpost on your main guild fifth or any fifth? No, you will not be able to place any outpost on your guild monument uh, fifth. So when you have a fifth, it can be either one guild monument or either one outpost. There can be no two outposts on one fifth, there cannot be guild monument and outpost on one fifth. Uh, of course, there can be no two guild monuments on one fifth, so it, it's only one on one. <clears throat> what else? Uh, uh, where do you see when guilds are vulnerable? So, guilds vulnerability, their judgment hour status uh, will be seen on the map, on the global map. There will be special icons that will tell you that uh, in an hour there will be a judgment hour for uh, the certain guild, for the, for the fifths that are controlled well by the certain guild. And once the judgment hour will be active, you will also see a special icon. And if there is a level 3 outpost nearby uh, that is lit up, you will also see it and all neighboring uh, fifths that are vulnerable by this uh, burning outpost will also be highlighted. So basically, my in-game map will be your main source of information. But also, also you will be able to check out this certain guild and see its rank and see its uh, um, judgment hour primary uh, settings or prime time settings. Uh, those you will be able to predict uh, when uh, you will be able to see the uh, gen hour schedule. Maybe later on, uh, if there will be demands, so we'll create um, a judgment hour schedule page for each guild. Um, that means that both that guild and uh, their enemies and friendlies will be able to see when the guild will be uh, vulnerable. But at first, you will be able to see it on the map. Uh, Nate is on Appland. Yes, so uh, as I said, Appland will be upgraded on 0 to 0. That means that natives will also be on Appland. So, and experience progression, skill leveling up, well, everything zero that is uh, related to 0 to 0 will be on Appland. Well, of course, there will be no new map on Appland, but the old one. But all the other features will be on the Appland. Natives. Mm. Mm, okay, uh, there are three questions. Um, why not uh, able to use courses for Lancer in native camps? Because we believe it will be really hard to teach natives how to counter Lancer properly. And so we really wanted to create a dungeon like experience when you have a cramped up. Uh, tight place when you have to keep up uh, and look up for your positioning and so uh, positioning of natives uh, and that's why horses uh, with all the complications uh, are not allowed so yes it will be put only rate right on the native camps uh, will you trademark the term soon uh, we're working on that <laughs> 
uh, if we are not be able to boost the skinning itself, what is the benefit from premium players? Um, no, so oh, the benefit for premium players will be disclosed so soon. <laughs> Uh, but of course, uh, well, experience boosters are still there. So premium players with subscription will be able to use Power Hour to increase their uh, experience boost uh, significantly. But there will be uh, more uh, advantages that we will disclose later. Uh, will we still still be able to teleport to participate in battles? So um, so far, so far. On a global big map, we're going to keep that. Uh, we're going to keep it uh, this possibility. Uh, no, we're going to keep this possibility. Uh, but we will see how it's going to proceed. Uh, and maybe, maybe uh, if there will be good points, why we should force everyone to run somewhere to list into the battle, and so in order to be teleported from this battle on the battleground. We can review it. I mean, uh, on a bigger map, running toward a certain location might be even worse experience. I mean, even longer it will take, even longer uh, than on a smaller map. So for now, we want to avoid it. But later on, if we see that there are good points against it, we can always turn it off. And guys, about the soon answer. Uh, nobody is trolling you. Nobody is trying to hide something from you. We just don't want to give the promises that we cannot keep. And there are a lot of moments uh, that are not completely certain about when and how it's going to be released. That's why we are not providing any certain information for now. Uh, you know that we provide the information after all about the what is wipe and when is wipe and how it works. Well, I'd say that more than half of the way is done. I mean, we have all, we, soon we're going to have only Appland, and then a new map, and then zero to zero. So just, guys, be patient. It's really going out soon. But when exactly soon, I, I'm unable to tell you right now. Not in this AMA. Um, ship on oh, natives on Appland, I answered it. Okay, it was a spam of questions, spam of question. Um, remote IB and listing I have answered on it. Okay, good question. How will thieves uh, be added on Appland and how will it affect uh, existing guilds? So, um, we have, uh, I, have <laughs> I have already we created a generator that actually generates the thieves and provinces uh, and the result of this generation can be edited manually. Uh, in this generator, uh, we uh, downloaded all the monuments from Appland. Uh, so when it gen generates such a piece, um, um, it generates it in this, that, that way, that monument will be uh, inside the thief and at least 20 tiles away from its uh, border. That means that um, city claim uh, will be uh, inside of the same thief. At least it should be that way. A realm claim might be on other thieves, unfortunately, because realm claims of tier four, um, tier four guilds are even larger than a couple of thieves, so it's inevitable. But um, the city claim itself should be on one on the same thief, so you will not be uh, forced to rebuild your city uh, claim, at least city um, your your city. Uh, but you you will be able. Um, as soon as we make those uh, zero to zero changes, well, we suggest for those guilds to go out and build new outposts on the neighboring thieves to, to protect more land around them and make sure that their buildings are safe and fine. Mm. Oh, also, good question. Will large guilds be able to store all their loot in a separate, uh, smaller guilds claim in order to make it harder for enemy to get uh, it as there is less judgment hours available for smaller guilds? Yes, and you can always keep your loot uh, in a um, guild monument of thief, and it will be also safe there. So, yeah, 
you can use all different tricks to hide your loot, but the question is uh, how far it will be from you and how accessible it will be. Because I remind everyone that you will not be able to place uh, guild monuments uh, on a fifth that are neighboring each other. That means that whatever guild you have will be at least one fifth away from your uh, from your other guild. And that means you will have to run quite a distance uh, in order to get an access to those uh, resources. Or to and that also applies to all the ideas of making a private claim on a green land and use it as a secure stash uh, for your guild. Well, if you have a guild that's just standing next to the green land, it might work for you. But if you want to get uh, a proper positioning on a global map, you'll have to go further. Uh, once you are going further, your stash on a green uh, on a green land doesn't uh, give you much of advantage because it will take <laughs> hours to get to your stash and back. Mm. So there is a question uh, about, about character swipe and tickets. So again, no characters will be wiped and all tickets will be useful. So you will not have to buy new tickets. So I mean, it, it is not required. Um, uh, how are you going to deal with the high latency West Coast US and Canada players are experiencing? So um, lack compensation is the only answer that we have. Uh, but basically, basically we can do no, uh, no, uh, we can do no miracle here. I mean, if you're fine, have a good being, nothing can be done. But I want to say that there is a, a lot of Chinese players that were playing from across the Pacific or <laughs> far, far from way and they were quite successful on Northern American servers and they had the ping way, way, way higher than you guys have. And European servers uh, are placed uh, on a transatlantic optic fiber, not far from a uh, transatlantic op optic fiber. So your ping will be as the best as possible on the servers. But what I'm, I'm trying to say that uh, we do not believe that it's that much of the problem that everyone keeps talking about. I mean, I myself on the uh, Midwest of the United States and I have ping around 150 and it's playable. I was uh, in the native stress test so, and it was playable. And uh, in game it's too. Well, of course, you might be a bit less, uh, but really a bit less um, active uh, in a PvP, but it's more about your position rather than your ping. Um, no, just question by you. Will the craft action raise the skill itself or only XP will raise? So yes, as I stated, only uh, the experience, uh, the, all the crafting uh, abilities will raise your crafting experience pool. And that crafting experience pool is like it's one for all your crafting abilities. And that means that while this one experience pool can be used on any skill you want. So as I said, if you have, uh, if you craft armor, you get experience from it. And that experience can be used for, for hunting or for alchemy or for learning your alchemy skills. Uh, uh, can we get a high-res version of the new map and the name? Uh, no name disclosed yet, but higher version um, high-res version map, I believe it should have been posted in uh, in a dev blog. Steph, do you know something about it? Um, I'll, I th yeah, I think so. I'll, tr I'll link it. I'll find it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so Katrina, well, I think we will, the, the new map will sh should have been revealed. Yeah, it's been revealed today and it's in high res. Uh, Catherine actually linked it earlier in this chat. Uh, I see people are linking it here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Native Sun Emperor, I to answer it. Okay, <laughs> C65, man, 67. <laughs> mentions of me uh, while I'm saying it's even increasing um, honestly um, 10 more minutes I'll just scroll randomly down and just will 
point with my finger in some random question and I will answer it. And then maybe five more minutes for the most topics that were left. Yeah, enough for now, really. Um, yeah, so we're going to finish in 10 minutes. 71 more questions. Come on, guys. <laughs> okay, no ships for Appland, not yet. Natives will be on Appland, as said that. Um, Remote IB li uh, listing uh, said it. Mm, minor skills uh, will not be that much affected by the skill tree changes, if I remember. Mm, crafting pool, I have answered it. Uh, ping, I have answered it. Uh, uh, stretch the inventory window, not yet. Uh, but if there will be a lot of uh, requests for that feature, well, we can implement it. Um, we'll, uh, okay, skill conversion will be disclosed later. Uh, are there any new heraldry designs being implemented for guild tablets? Not yet, um, but we had it in some distant plans. And it's not that hard to implement the design, it's harder to implement the technical part of it because there are a lot of guilds with, with their current heraldry and adding new types of heraldry is not that easy as it sounds or when I mean like a new types of heraldry in order to keep the old heraldry working mm -hmm. so okay I press the last messages uh, nerf my pvp skill okay I will uh, damage lock in game well uh, you already have it in the system chat so um, I think we need more details of what exactly do you mean here. Uh, will the resistance of the armors be changed again? Um, that's a good question. Binard, are you here? Yes. Are you going to tweak the um, armor uh, resistance uh, in a 0 to 0 combat patch? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, well, the answer is yes. <laughs> um, Oh, yeah, good question. Uh, do you think Appland will be cured from Outpost Minefield? That's that's important news. Um, we're going to wipe all the outposts from the Appland map. Unfortunately, it's inevitable uh, because so right now outposts are used to control the FIF, but since the, now they are placed in a random pattern, uh, we will not be able to create fifths around those outposts so in, in order to make sure that all the land is covered with fifths. That's why all the outposts will be wiped. All the guild monuments will stay intact, but, but all the outposts will be wiped. Uh, and so once 0 to 0 will be on the appellant, only guild monuments will be up. And yeah, you will have to rebuild all the uh, outposts. Okay, what's next? So, what can be looted during the judgment hour? So basically, um, it will be uh, the same way uh, as what you can loot on a on a city mo on a city claim uh, during the judgment hour on the red world now. So we will consider all fifths uh, as a. Um, city claims uh, and when general hour on fifth is active uh, raiders will be able to do the same amount of uh, nasty things as they can do now on a, a city claim on a red vault on Avalon uh, are you going to implement system to analyze the damage of all players in game so right now working closely with um, developer of uh, third party site uh, leap damage and he provides us with a lot of interesting info when we don't have time to make a larger observation by the self but we also have our own internal on analytic system so I'd say we are good with the tools for now for our own game design um, game design needs but if we are talking about some kind of um, uh, damage and anal analyzing system for players. Well, we it can be considered, but it's no uh, not implemented now. Uh, how many? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, how many IBs can be placed to, to take over the pro? Uh, that's a good important question. So, 
it's only one IP needed to take over the province. And when you uh, cast an IB, uh, you place your own province as a wager, your own province or province or um, tier three or fifth or with an outpost. So that means if you lose an IB, you lose your province or you lose your, the, your you lose your whole fifth with tier three outpost. If you win, you get the province, and it can be only one IB on a province set. But if there is a guild that controls a lot of provinces and suddenly it become targeted by multiple um, by multiple guilds or multiple alliances or by just another large guild that means every zero province can be IB so basically if you have only one province you will have only one IB at once but if you have a lot of provinces you can have a lot of uh, IBs on each uh, you can have a lot of uh, IB at once but only one IB per province so the bigger are you, the more vulnerable are you, the more people you have to keep to control the province. But again, I remind everyone that losing a province is, doesn't, is not a game-breaking or game-changer because you're not losing your claim, your buildings or anything, you're just losing the source of taxation, additional revenue, nothing like that. And well, some of your price. Mm. Um, boom, 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 boom. So again, guys, I have said everything I can about kills, items, um, stats transition. So only thing I can say right now is that alignment will be kept, mm, and your character names, of course, also, uh, and all the other details will be disclosed later. Mm. Uh, native villages instance, have you considered it? Um, I'm afraid free access of PvP will ruin uh, this PvE experience. Well, first of all, it's not that easy to do, and if there will be a, a lot of requests for that, we might consider some kind of instance uh, PvE rate, but for now it's not what we designed, because one of the reasons why we created, uh, created native villages is actually to have a PvP hotspots, uh, on the map, uh, where people can go for some PvP over PvE action, and yeah, it's by design. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, IBs will still be years 100 versus 100, but again, we remind everyone that when you have 100 versus 100 IB, it's not required to have all 100 players. I mean the Defenders still might also have not 100 players, so when you have an IB uh, that is 100 versus 100, but then actually it's like 60 versus 65, you are still good to go. Mm. No. Oh, Bobby, I, lo I love you too, Black Nug. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm scrolling way to the bottom. Have you managed to implement the role of diplomat in guilds? Um, no, I don't, I'm not sure I understand this question. So, all guild leaders and minor leaders are acting like diplomat. They can change the standings. Uh, will we be able to build safely on an outpost uh, fifth? It's it's misspelled. Uh, so yes, um, uh, as, I, as I said, so the fee that's controlled by an outpost uh, will be considered like a town claim. Um, that means that you will be able to build your constructions on any part of the fee, not in a certain radius or anything, just every, all, all land of the fee will be useful for your construction. But as I said, if there is a neighboring outpost that is level three enemy and it's burning and it's your judgment hour now, you will have to protect your property. So it's like not 100%. Will you guys change the tabards and shields old aspects? They look like broken when they are full. It seems like some kind of bug. I'm not sure if it was properly reported, but we will look into it. If you can provide more info, it would be nice. 
bridges, no uh, buildable buildings. We have buildable buildings already. So yeah, bridges are not in zero to zero, might be in some future, but again, they are not that easy. Will you implement some kind of fast travel system on the new map, like there is in some your own servers through scripts, so you can, for example, be faster from northern to southern part of map? Uh, it will take some time to travel. Well, I'd say no. Uh, we don't really want uh, really instant travels, and uh, it will be too easier and it will actually remove uh, one aspect of our game, of our new map when there are certain choke points that we, you will certainly have to pass and that means that guilds that are controlling those choke points might so get somebody in or not allow somebody in so it's the whole global control, territory's global control aspect is more important now and so Teleportation will remove this aspect, and we would like to. Mm. Why have the servers been taken down in the new if the new map isn't ready? Now, uh, because we're doing it slowly, step after the step, uh, and that's why I, when I say soon, that means soon. That's why we're doing it one after another to make sure that there is nothing lost, that so there is no m too much stress on the servers and the development and system administrators team. And that's why doing it slowly, step after the step. And I'd say we have done most of the way already. No. Why all brought it to Appland? Because Appland will not be wiped. That's that's why everyone is on Appland. That's why Appland is going to stay, and everyone who will decide to stay on Appland will be able to. Stay. Uh, okay, one last question. I'm closing my eyes, and when I open, whatever question will be, I'll answer it, and let's end with it. Mm. Can players travel back and forth between worlds? As I've said, no, there will be no travel from new map on Appland, but there will be uh, travel from Appland on a new world with a certain rules and limitations that we're going to disclose soon. <sighs> okay, I think that's it. Steph, maybe you have questions that I might have missed that are important or somebody else. I think you covered a lot of the popular ones, but guys, don't worry if you have submitted a question via the form recently and you haven't had an answer, we will be replying via email within a week, so don't worry if you've got any unanswered questions. And thank you everybody for tuning in, and thank you Bobek and Vinod for answering people's questions today. Uh, well, uh, thank you everyone for listening, thank you everyone for attending. And just really, really, really a short question. I, uh, I, got, I, um, I see that it's not a bug. It looks dirty and some, ni some knights want to look cool and clean. Well, not in our game, sorry. <laughs> and yeah, thank you everyone for participating. Thank you everyone uh, for attending. And well, we love you all. And do remember life is... And, 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 and uh, life is with the logo. And uh, Q piglets icon also. Okay, Bobby is out. See ya. Bye guys.